Okay, uh, before I get started with um, the next fantasy booking thing, hang on. Yeah, I wanted to make it clear about my thoughts of the invasion angle that uh, was done in 2001 that, that I'm going to personally read book. At the time, I was just out of high school. I dropped out in year 10, which was stupid. Uh, yeah, um, and I was pretty much still very much a complete, uh, mark. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous how much of a mark I was. Like, I knew the, I knew what they were doing wasn't necessarily real. It's just, I was, I was at, it's in such love with the World Wrestling Federation, the WWF at the time. And I was such a big, huge wrestling fan uh, that I wasn't really questioning what they were doing. I wasn't really on the internet that much at the time. I wasn't looking up stuff. I wasn't looking at checking out angles, spoilers, and all that. And so I was just pretty much enjoying what they were, were feeding me for the most part. Then it got to around about... Uh, this time that I would, uh, I, WCW closed and I was, even at the time I thought, you know what, this is probably not going to be a good thing. Like I wasn't watching WCW at the time. I, I dipped in and out of that. I, I was, I would watch it on a, the odd occasion. I just couldn't tell who some of the guys were at the time. Uh, this was 99, 2000. I watched a few episodes here and there. I had heard about Goldberg being injured. I he was the only guy that I kinda of really kinda of liked. Uh towards two thousand I was starting to like Scott Steiner a bit too, so yeah. Uh so WCW closed down and I was shocked. I, I had not been I heard something about WCW being bought and, and that and I was like this uh, and then when I found out it was Vince buying it I was like and always being shut down, I was like, this is bad. Like, I knew, knew it was bad. I know I'm going over this again. Uh, and then for like two months, nothing was really happening. You had Shane coming out saying, WCW is starting soon. And I'm like, yeah, okay. <sighs> waiting and waiting and waiting. And then lo and behold, it's an invasion angle. And it's like, oh. And uh, the first few things, like, this is the first real type thing I'd seen. I'd missed all the NWO stuff, so this was all, like, new to me. Uh, then you had the first WCW match, which was Booker T versus Buff Bagwell. I kind of liked Buff. Uh, I really liked Booker T. I liked how he was in WCW. I liked all the names of his moves. The bookends, the Ghetto Blaster, which which was the initial name for the scissors kick he did. And what I wasn't liking initially was that he wasn't using the bookend. I, I thought that was a more impactful move than the scissors kick that he did. Um, I never really liked that move. I, I actually liked, the, liked him in his last few days in WCW. So... And then I noticed that there weren't a lot of these big names coming in. They're like Booker T and Diamond Dallas Page would be, eh, were the only real big names that you could really identify with. I liked when DDP showed up. Uh, I, I really liked The Undertaker and all that. But looking back on it now and knowing a little bit more about DDP's character, it's not really <laughs> true. So, yeah. Uh, so, but... I initially liked, I liked the how they incorporated ECW. I actually thought it would have been a better idea had it been these three fa uh, three different factions buying for control rather than ECW teaming up with WCW. Really, does that make a lot of sense? <clears throat> or doing it uh, completely separately? But. Uh, I understand why they did that, because they didn't really have a lot of 
WCW guys. Even they even say I don't have that many. Uh, Shane comes to, to Vince later on. And says, I don't really have that many guys. He's taken two of my guys. I can't really afford to lose guys right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, and you look at the you got mainly you got some guys that were like there for like the last year or so you didn't really have the established names like Sting, Nash, Hall, <laughs> Goldberg. We had to wait <laughs> two years later for Goldberg. Uh, but yeah okay I kind of get that he had a massive payout so you weren't going to get him but there are a few others so uh yeah so it wasn't until about uh, till, once you get after um, SummerSlam, and even sometimes be, uh, a few times before that, you really start to notice that this invasion ang the invasion angle was really starting to. It wasn't that good, and it was really starting to fall apart. And I mean, you look at it, especially uh, like you, you see it after the invasion pay per view itself. That's. Like I'm, I actually kind of like the initial premise with that they were kind of going with with Paul Heyman saying, "We're wrestling, Vince is sports entertainment," and I kind of like that that idea at the time. And then you got the shoot, uh, like I think it was the SmackDown before Survivor Series. That that's the only other significant moment you can really come to with, with this. I mean, you had the initial shock and aura, and like nothing happened in between time. Uh, chronic not being used properly, come on. I mean, uh, I understand that they they came in, they were kind of like, no, we don't want to go to, uh, the, to developmental or whatever. I mean, they didn't really give, give them enough time to get through their ring rust, really. They just fed them to Kane and Undertaker, and that was it. Really, really should have spent some time working with those guys because they were I, they were probably one of my favorite tag teams. But anyway, so we've got the uh, this fantasy booking thing coming up. Um, I will probably have to do. Hang on, I will. Okay, sorry, I got actually got all the way through that one. <laughs> And uh, I ran out of tape. So, anyway, this is me rebooking the invasion angle, the first chapter. And that re is trying to re establish the WCW brand is mainly what I'm going to be going for here. Trying to do some decent stuff and minimalist stuff with the booking. Uh, I'm taking kind of a uh, liberty here because I'm taking some stuff from the angle that uh, Jim Cornette did, some of the stuff. So, but the rules have been established by the Wrestling Roundtable. Uh, they published a list of all the requirements and all that. So I'm using them, their rosters, and that is a blueprint for this. Uh, who could have been picked up and who I could have picked up. Uh, so. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna go here from here. Uh, hang on. Da, 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 at a point. Okay. Okay. Tell me. Okay. Mm, at a point. Okay. The my WCW roster is as follows. Okay, I picked up Booker T, Chuck Palumbo, Sean O'Hare, Jeff Jarrett, DDP, 
uh, so far. This is so far. I'm going to introduce some other ones later on. Disco Inferno, Bam Bam Bigelow, The Wall, Mike Awesome, Lance Storm, Canyon, Johnny the Bull Stand Bolly, Dustin Rhodes, uh, Mark Jinjak, Reno, Reno, or whatever he's Hugh Morris, Shane Douglas, Ernest the Cat Miller, Big Vito, Vampiro, uh, the Cruiserweights, uh, Rey Mysterio Jr., the Cruiserweight Tag Team Champion. Billy Kidman, the Cruiserweight Tag Team Champion. Shane Helms, the WCW Cruiserweight Champion. Uh, Lash LaRue, Shannon Moore, Evan Courageous, Elix Skipper, Kid Romeo, Chavo Guerrero, Jamie Noble, Jason Jett, Mike Sanders, Kaz Hayashi, Jimmy Yang, Kiwi, Kiwi, and the women, Stacey Keebler, Daphne, Tori Wilson, and Tori Wilson. Uh, the GM... I have is Eric Bischoff. Uh, his bodyguard is Road War Animal. The WCW announce team is Scott Hudson and Dusty Rhodes. Instead of. Oh, and the backstage interviewer is Stevie Ray. Uh, and there is a few surprises coming up as well. Some jump overs and that. Uh, yeah, the filthy animal. Oh, yeah, I picked up Conan. Did I say that? I picked up Conan as well. Uh, I meant to. Anyway, I picked up Conan as well. So, yeah. Uh, the last Nitro where I would have go pretty much the way it did. Uh, but at the end of the show would have been gone a little bit differently. The little... Uh, the different way I'd have it go is Shane McMahon would come out, interrupt the promo, like uh, uh, the Vince would, would essentially be the same. But the, this little part here has changed. This little little part here. Uh, okay, at the end of the show, Shane would come out, and it would probably uh, I think would could I uh, would have with some input probably would have written that a bit different than this. Shane says, well, I couldn't resist coming on to this last Nitro at all. I'm doing a doing this for you, Dad. Uh, I've been putting my name on... Uh, okay, uh, let's try this again. Okay, he come out and say something along the lines of this. You come out and say this mar this marks the end of an era. The last nitro last Monday nitro ever. That's a shame, Dad. I know this this is, will probably turn out to be one of your worst decisions you have ever made. The and I just think to myself, I've been putting my name on a bunch of dotted lines lately. I put my name on a dotted line for Face you at WrestleMania 17. I recently put my name on a dotted line with an agreement with UPN. And I put my name on a dotted line for ownership of WCW, Dad. Now, you thought you could have T Ted Turner walk his butt down that aisle at WrestleMania and put the contract right in front of you? You know for a fact he was never going to do that, Dad. But your ego is so out of control, you thought you could get him to do that. Instead, he signed it over to me. And UPN has decided to cancel SmackDown and bring in Thursday Night Nitro WCW. Thursday Night Nitro, whatever. You, and then you... That's the end of the WCW show. And you'd still see Vince McMahon standing there like... This is completely shocked and worn out. Okay, so there, from there you go on to this uh, first Nitro back. First Nitro back comes out with Shane, and walking, uh, and he introduces the new general manager of WCW, Eric Bischoff, and you can even have. I, I actually like his. Um, WWE theme song a little bit better, so hopefully you can get that. Man. But uh, before he can say too much, uh, 
says it's great to be back and it's great to have WCW back on the air, even though it's been only off the air for, what, two weeks or something. I think I would have it. Uh, yeah, this would be the second Thursday after WrestleMania 17, so it would be about two weeks. Um, uh, it's pre-taped and everything, so unfortunately it loses that live aspect to it. But yeah, uh, before I can say too much, Jeff Jarrett comes out says, hey, it's great to be back and all that, but I want Booker T tonight for the WCW title. And through some gesturing and that, uh, eventually, uh, he agree, uh, agrees to give him a shot. Uh, then we kick things off to have the Filthy Animals, Billy Kidman, and Rey Mysterio, the Cruiserweight Tag Team Champions, take on Shannon Moore and Evan Courageous. Three count. Now, I think that that name was copyrighted or something, so I'll just call them More Courageous or something like that. Uh, and then you have the Filthy Animals, of course, win that because it's like their first title defense. Uh, DDP then comes out, starts cutting a promo saying how great it is to be back. And then, through the crowd jumping the guardrail from behind, comes Raven and Stephen Richards. Now, Raven uh, comes out, turns DDP around, kick to the gut, even flow DVD. Uh, and he says, he grabs the mic and says, now, says, now that WCW is back, we're back to in WCW, referring to himself, Raven, and Stephen Richards. Now, through the coming weeks, because uh, I'm only doing like the first show of each show shows here from here on out. Ah, uh, establish this. Raven is now an equal. Uh, Stephen Richards is now an equal with Raven. Okay. Uh, Cruiserweight at uh, title match. Then, so you have after you cut to break after the DD put the P thing. Shane Helms taking on Lash Larue. Shane Helms gets the win. Uh, I imagine that would be a pretty competitive match up though. Then we have a number one contendership for the U.S. Uh, title. You have Shane Douglas taking on Dustin Rhodes, and you have. Shane Douglas get the win here. So he's the number one contender. Uh, the heavyweight WCW tag team titles, Chuck Colombo and Sean O'Hare taking on the Mama Lukes, Big Vito and Johnny the Bull Stan Bolly. Yeah, uh, again, they, uh, I get from memory, them two had only recently won the belt, so there's no point in taking them off them yet. So you have them win. But it would be, a, again, a very competitive match, I imagine. Then we go to our world title match. Booker T versus Jeff Jarrett. Now, I'd imagine this would be pretty competitive back and forth. Uh, I would make, have the, them go out there and I'd tell them, look, I need you guys to re-establish the heavyweight division as a big deal here because, yeah. I mean, if that, that match failed, it could be the end. And it would be, it's better than having a, him take on Buff. You know, you have the main event of Bash at the Beach, 2000. Uh, Alright, uh, at the end of the match, though, Jeff Jarrett's laid out there like this, and uh, Booker T's going, yeah, oh. and the uh, ref's hold number 10, everything goes blackout. Lights come up. Booker T's face down like this on the ground. And there's Vampire over there. Arms folded. Looking down. Looking back up. And that's it. Uh, then you, uh, he, he doesn't even say a word. It's, you have the announcers going, Oh my god, it's Vampiro! Vampiro's back! Then you... And the show, you, you've ended on a shocker and you've got people wanting to find out what's happening next week. Anyway, so that's the beginning of the invasion angle from my point of view. 
and there will be some more surprises coming down the pike and we go on from this to the initial pay-per-view that's coming up next time